Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how you can implement auth and CRUD for your backend using Superbase. And today we're going to be using Visual Backend to help us with this, all right? Now, what we're going to work on today is firstly implementing authentication. So we're going to implement login and sign up endpoints. And then after that, we're going to be implementing um, CRUD operations to allow the user, once he's logged in, to make authenticated requests to get, update, and delete his data. So the first thing that we're going to do is, is add Superbase to our project over here. And so I'm going to come to my dashboard. And as you can see, we have this user table already created with the email and username field. So that's going to represent our user data and the auth ID as the primary key, um, which we'll talk about more later on. But anyways, let's paste in our API keys. I'm going to copy the project URL as well as the service key. Paste that in. All right, and as you can see, we have this middleware function that comes generated with the module, but we'll talk a little bit more about this later on. So the first thing that we're going to do is create our routes. Um, I'm just going to create the sign up and login one first. And we'll work on those two um, initially. But in here, let's talk about what we're going to do. So the first thing that we want to do is actually insert a new user into Superbase auth. All right. And then the second thing that we want to do is get the auth ID from the inserted auth user and use that to insert into the user table. So let's write insert into Superbase table user, All right? Now, inside our Superbase, let's work on these two functions. So I'm going to first create an auth function and call this create auth user. And, I'm, and throughout this video, I'm going to be using this kickstart with AI feature just to move things a little bit faster. All right, as you can see, we've generated some code, and I believe this should be data. So once the user has been created inside Superbase auth, we then want to return the auth ID, and that should be through data.user.id. And so let's create a user group here. After we get this auth ID, we then want to create a DB user using the auth ID, so they're linked. Right. Everything looks fine for this function, but this should be an object. And that looks all right. So now we can come over here and start working on the actual sign up endpoint. So I'm going to first get the email, password, and username from the request body. All right. And then the second thing that I want to do is insert the user into Superbase auth and get the auth ID. So I'm going to pass in email and password. And then the last thing that we want to do is to create an entry into the user table with the auth ID. So let's say await create db user. And in here, for the user data, we're going to say auth ID, the auth ID, and then username and email are the same. And so this field must actually match what we have on in our table. All right. So that's why I did that. And then after that, let's just return status of 200 successfully signed user up. All right, so let's just wrap that in a try catch block to catch any errors. All right, great. So now let's work on our second endpoint, which is to log in the user. And so for this, all we need to do is come over here and create a new function called auth login. So we're just going to use Superbase to get the to log in the user via his email and password, as you can see, and then we'll get the authentication token. So I'm going to call this sign in with password. And what we really want from this um, from this function is the access token. And I'm not too sure which field that is in at the moment. So I'm just going to return the entire data object. But ideally, you know, you might return just the access token to the client. So over here, Let's just call that function let email password equals to auth login. Pass in that email and password. Sorry, this should be request.body. Pass that into this function and we get back the data. And let's just wrap that in a try catch block. Data. 
Alright, so let's just test out these first two endpoints. And in Postman, I've already created some um, different requests to be made to test out these ones. So I'm going to run the server using NodeMon. And we do that by npm run dev2. And so in Postman, the first thing I'm going to do, let's just check that this is fine, is use this email password and username to sign up. So let's click that. So we successfully signed the user up. If we come over to Superbase, you can see that in our table, we have a new email and username. So this is wrong, auth ID. I believe that, I think we messed up there. All right, so our mistake over here was that we failed to write the await syntax. So I've just added that and we can retry this request. I'm just gonna quickly delete these two from Superbase so that we can retry it. Let's delete that. All right, so I'm gonna come over here and run this request again. And that is working successfully. If we come over here, we have the auth ID correctly put in, email and username are correct as well. And in our authentication table, we have a new user. All right, so I'm just gonna quickly verify this email on my phone, just so that we can continue with the other requests. All right, and, and now that that's verified, let's test out our second method, which is to log in. So I'm gonna come over here and use the same email and password as before and click login. And as you can see, we've gotten this data from the Superbase sign in with password method. And what, we're, what we really care about is this access token, which we're gonna use now. So in this next part of the video, we're gonna let the user use this access token once he's logged in to make requests to get his data, update it and delete it. So let's first create um, a new group called auth. And inside this group, we're gonna have a middleware, which all the containing requests will pass through first. And so this middleware will authenticate the user and make sure that he's actually logged in. And once we, we do that, we can make our actual request. So we're gonna get the user's data. We're gonna update the user's data. And then we're going to delete that user. So let's first work on this authentication middleware. And if you notice just now, when we created the um, Superbase module, it actually came with this function over here, Superbase auth middleware. And so we're just gonna edit it slightly. Let's delete that. And essentially what this function does is that it takes in the token from the authorization header in the bearer token format. It uses this method to actually decode the token and get the user from it. And so what we would next want to do is take this auth ID and get the user from the Superbase user table. So before we do that, I'm going to first create a new function called get user by auth ID. All right. And in here, this looks correct. So I'm going to use this function now over here and say let user equals await get user by auth ID, like that. And then we're going to store the user inside the request object like that. And that pretty much finishes our auth middleware. So inside this endpoint, we can just call that same function. And now every time we make a request with this prefix slash auth, it's going to first call this function before going into these functions. So now that we've done that, we can actually work on our get user data function. And this is gonna be really simple because if you remember, we already stored our user inside the request object once he's authenticated. And so all we need to do is say res.status 200.send request.user. So let's test that this works. I'm gonna to come to Postman copy this access token and paste it inside this authorization header like that and call this method. And as you can see, we've successfully fetched the data. So that's good. And now for the second function, which is to update the user, what we're going to do is first get the parameter which we want to update. And for this particular function, I'm just going to say the user can only update his username because I don't want to let the user touch his email or auth ID at the moment. So let's do that. And then let's create a function once again called update user by auth ID in here. And in here, this function looks correct. 
So we're going to use this over here. Await update user by auth ID. And if you remember, we need to get the auth ID um, to update the user. And we start that when we authenticated the user in the auth, auth middleware. So let's just extract that out and pass it in here. So that should be the update data. And now once this is complete, we can return that to the user saying successfully updated user. If not, it failed. All right. So let's test this out. What I'm going to do is let's copy this token again, paste that in here like that. And in here, I'm going to update the username to this new username just to show you that it works. Let's try that. So we successfully updated the user. If I come to Superbase, our user row has been updated with the new username. So that function works correctly. And now let's move on to the next one, which is to delete the user. So if you remember when we created the user, we actually inserted it into Superbase auth as well as our Superbase database. So we need to delete from those two. So let's once again get the auth ID from the request user object. And then we first want to delete from Superbase auth. And then after that, delete from Superbase table. Okay, so if we come over here, let's first, I, I think it would be better to delete from the table first actually, because then if anything goes wrong, we'll retain the auth ID. But anyways, let's first create a function called delete user by auth ID, like so. All right, so in here, the table should be user and this should be equals if the auth ID matches. Auth ID. And now let's create another function which is to delete auth user. And so this should be admin auth.admin delete user. And other than that, everything looks fine. So if we come here, let's call our two functions, await delete, delete user by auth ID, pass in the auth ID, and we call delete auth user. Wrap that in try catch block. All right, so now that that's done, we can come over to Postman and test out our delete endpoint. So I'm gonna come over here and get the access token copied again, paste it in the auth header, like that. And we don't have anything for the body, so we can just send a request. As you can see, we successfully deleted the user. If I come over to Superbase, there's no um, entry in the user table, and there's also no entry in the auth table. All right, so as you can see, we've successfully created um, operations of create, read, update, and delete. And all this has been um, implemented with authentication as well. So I hope you enjoyed this little video of how we can do that using Superbase with Visual Backend. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.